I love that song. So we're going to have the sisters sing the first verse together. It's nice to hear somebody else sing it. It's hard to stop and let somebody else sing when you know you're supposed to be singing too. So we'll give all the brothers the opportunity of listening. And then we'll give the sisters an opportunity to hear the brothers sing. Sound good? All right. Sisters. service in a word of prayer. Amen. If you have a need upon your heart tonight, the King of Kings is here with us. God bless you, Brother Jeff. Amen. Wonderful Heavenly Father, we come with thanksgiving and praise and worship. Yes, we Father, do, Lord. Where the carcass is, there will the eaves be gathered together, and your children have once again come. We lay ourselves at your feet, and we pray that you'd come and minister to us, Lord. Nothing in our hands we bring. We just wait upon you, Father. Have the preeminence in our lives, we pray, Lord. Anoint your speaker, and may we receive that which you have for us today. We commit it all into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may have your seats this evening. Brother George, why don't you just come on up and get ready? Amen. So everybody just remember to adjust your schedules accordingly no service on Wednesday evening one service next Sunday and those that will be practicing for the watch night uh, service make sure that you get your schedules in I'll apologize in advance our family will be at the camp we've got quite a few groups uh, one just checked in this evening and they take us right up to the 4th of January not the same group of course in and out so we'll miss you so this will be our last service until next year so pray for us <laughs> We'll be watching and enjoying the service with you. Brother George, God bless you. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider Thy wall, thy hands of me. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. 
favorite songs. Thank you very much for that. Sister Anna O and those that are going to be singing with her, come and get ready. Let's just sing the first verse of O Holy Night, if we could together.
that. We're going to invite Brother John Andes to come. We'll sing as he's coming. Number 871 on the screen. Beautiful star of Bethlehem. Wonderful service this morning. For Brother David's sake, I trust he's already in an airplane on his way back, but we appreciate the unwrapped gift that was brought to us this morning. Amen. Why don't we stand together, change our position a little bit, invite Brother John to come. Beautiful star of Bethlehem,
doing tonight, Lord? Amen. Well, the person next to you or near you is a gift from God. Why don't you shake their hand and bless them tonight and say, God bless you. Thank you, musicians. Thank you. Brother Joe, do I have those slides? You can have your seats just for a moment. I, I wanted to bring you greetings from uh, Edmonton and, and just share in some uh, things. Brother Harold Hildebrandt sends his love and greetings to the church. Uh, Brother uh, Andrew Dodd is there on the right. Uh, he's assisting Brother Harold. And so you, the Lord willing, um, he'll be, his family will be with us next weekend. And uh, on the Friday night, we had a young people's meeting in a home, Brother Hildebrandt's home. This is just a couple photos of that. And then they were inspired by our church and the young people uh, singing. Um, so that, that last Sunday afternoon, in between services, they went to an old folks' home and encouraged um, the people that were there with singing. I just think that's wonderful. Yeah. I really, really do. And this was our church, some of our uh, people... Um, yesterday afternoon, just up the road here, singing for the glory of God, young people and old people. I really appreciate that. Sister Eleanor's there on the top with her hands raised, thanking God. And, and um, I, I think I'll go back. I, I, I missed one photo. Here's Brother Roger Lassard, and he was in the hospital a few days ago. Brother Tom and I visited him, and now I saw him standing there. I thought, praise the Lord. He goes from ICU to being a testimony. I think that's wonderful. God bless you, Brother Roger. Feeling better. Amen. That's wonderful. Thank you, Lord. This was last night in Linden area. Some of the families and people encouraging and singing for the glory of God. I just wanted you to know that this is the season and time when it's a good time to give out and be a blessing. And God bless you. I think I saw you, Brother Nathan, in almost all of those photos. And I think that's good. Amen. Keep shining the light. And uh, tonight is the last service before Christmas, and we just want to um, may the Lord encourage you tonight. We'll stand again and turn right to the Scripture. Psalms chapter 89, if we could turn to two places. Thank you, Brother Derek. It's hard to say see you next year, but... Amen. It's good. We'll see one another again. Amen. Psalms 89 and then Matthew chapter 1. I, I think it's good to look at one another as gifts and be thankful. Amen. Do you agree with that? And let's be happy as we see one another. Brother Marco's here all the way from Paradise, California in the last few days, and he's going back there, I understand. We just never know what's going to happen in our lives. Um, There's a brother, I'll just uh, say this as you're standing, just uh, a Wednesday night before last, he was in the service down at Brother Tim Pruitt's church, Brother Whistler, really fine brother, sits on the second row, right row Brother Sterling sitting, and I saw him raising his hands and worshiping God on the Wednesday night, and by the Thursday morning, he'd had a stroke. And he had uh, went to where he wasn't really uh, a lot coherent. And he passed away this last Wednesday morning. And I thought, from one week to the next week, you can have a brother or sister right in our church. Or it could be a family member. And they could just be right among us. And within just a few days, they could be gone. We want to make sure that we treasure one another and make sure that our offerings to one another is something that we appreciate. So God bless you tonight. We appreciate you. Psalms chapter 89, verse 50. These are verses Brother Branham read in a message, Christmas message. Psalms 89, verse 50. Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy servants, how I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people. Wherewith thine enemies have reproached, O Lord? Wherewith have they reproached the footsteps of thine anointed? But David didn't stop there. He said, Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and amen. amen. And tonight we'd like to speak on from reproach to a newborn faith. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 1.
kind of a family night uh, sermon for us, sermon before Christmas. There's something real, though, that the Lord can give to the family. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother, if you just listen really closely, there's a lot of paradoxes in these verses. When as his mother Mary was espoused or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And Brother Branham stops, and he sp spoke about how they were engaged, they were espoused, but the Bible says they were married, and thy husband, and thy wife. So engagement's very serious. It's not something to be taken lightly. Verse 21, And she, she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin, this is Isaiah 7, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. God with us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then Joseph being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Can we bow our heads? Our dear Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we have the truth of Christmas that you wasn't born in December, but you were born like all lambs in the springtime. But this was the season of the year that your prophet was led by the Holy Ghost to speak so many Christmas messages. It was bringing the truth to the bride that it's not Jesus in a little manger, but it's Jesus in our hearts. Lord, the world is going crazy even tonight in darkness as we heard this morning. But there's a little bride that has a light. The star of Bethlehem is still shining bright. The house is still full of God's bread. The water is still clear. There's still strength and, and comfort in the presence of God. Lord, may tonight's service be encouraging to the family. At this time of the year when so many are together, maybe with loved ones and family, but we realize on this December 23rd, Sunday evening, when so many are canceling tonight's service, but Brother Tom and Brother Bisco felt to have this meeting, I believe it's good, Lord, because there's many among us that we are their family. I pray for them tonight. That is who this service is reaching out for, that you have not forgotten them. Those that labor among us throughout the year and maybe seem little, or those that maybe are discouraged, those that might be weary, this is the reason for this service tonight. I pray that you would bring it from a time of just a reproach and a hard time and turn it around, and may there be newborn faith. May there be a freshness and an encouragement within the assembly that as we shout hallelujah and praise the Lord and rejoice, that the Holy Ghost could come to our souls, could heal our bodies, could cause our spirits to come to a rest and a shalom that all is well. Lord, we praise you tonight, God. 
May the darkness of this Laodicea hour be split with the voices of angels and the sounds of singing and the glories to God would not be just words of music sang this time of year, but may it be a revelation in our souls, moving back Satan, moving back the darkness, moving back evil spirits, that tonight's service could be a time when you would come among us in a special way. Be born tonight within our lives in a newborn faith. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you. You can have your seats. Amen. Nice to have Brother Kyle and Sister Christina. You are a gift to us. We love your family. We, we dearly love you, Brother Kyle. And... Um, well, he could have spoke tonight, but we're standing here. Amen. And all, God's gifts always find their places. Tonight, we want to take this thought uh, uh, under inspiration from reproach to newborn faith. And it comes from the message, we have seen his star and come to worship him. Brother Branham spoke that after the seals in 63. He said, a prophet or a seer don't go to sleep but he sees the angel standing there. The other man just goes to sleep and he sees the angel. Talking about Joseph. The angel said, Joseph, there isn't no riddle. There's nobody there that can interpret it for you. So I'm going to tell you about it. I'm going to make it real to you because there's nobody there that can make it real. Don't fear to take Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And Brother Branham said, Then when Joseph rose from his sleep, oh, how his heart must have been full of newborn faith. That's where we get our title tonight. Newborn faith. It was because God dealt with his life. That mystery that had bothered him, that something that he wanted to believe, but that's something that he dared to believe, but it was so unusual, yet was made known to him by a dream, new faith sprung up into his life. Brother Brown said, oh my, he had faith in God. He had faith in his wife then. So before then, it was a question. Before then, it was a mystery. Before then, he was a, a brother about in his 40s, that was about ready to put away a teenage young lady in the message. Because this had never happened before. That a virgin would conceive. But from a moment of him putting her away to the next few moments, he's embracing her as his wife. You say, what happened in between? God dealt with his life. And tonight we want to take you as a believer and put you into the story. Because we're all on a journey tonight. And this message and, and giving your life to Christ, many times there is a great reproach and there's a great scorn and there's a great misunderstanding. But tonight we want to leave that reproach and we want to turn to a newborn faith because Joseph came out of this experience with faith sprung up in his life. He was already a righteous man. He was already a just man. So I'm not speaking about newborn, meaning like a baby being born. We're not talking about a baby in a manger, and I'm not just speaking about the new birth. This is something that happens to a believer, that there's certain questions in your life, or times of loneliness, or times of fear, or situations you find yourself in, that God deals with our hearts with a newborn faith, and something springs out of your life. Brother Branham said he had faith in God. He had faith in his wife then. Both faith in God and love for his wife and love in the one that he loved. And there's no more question. No more question about it. He knew that was the angel of the Lord. He knew that God had revealed to him just exactly the question that was in his mind. So all the questions was gone. I thought maybe if there's anyone here that has questions in your life, the, the angel of the Lord could minister to you tonight. And God's gifts always find their places. Brother Branham said Joseph couldn't understand it. It was just too unusual. He was a good man. Nothing wrong with him. 
He was a good man, a just man, but it was so unusual. Brother Branham said Joseph, probably 40 years old, 45, something like that, they claim when he and Mary was engaged. But here we find something that had never had happened. A man espoused to this man, sorry, a woman espoused to this man, and yet found to be with a mother. It was so unusual, Joseph was minded to put her away. But right at that crucial moment, God sent his angel and appeared to him in a dream and said, Don't fear to take to thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And Brother Branham stops and he says, What a newborn faith Joseph must have had when he rose up from there. So he's already a believer. He's already a just man. Brother Branham said nothing wrong with Joseph. But there was nothing wrong with Mary. In fact, tonight I wanted to bring before you, it had never happened before that time, and it's never happened physically since that time that a virgin would bring forth a child. She went from bearing a reproach of people calling her a prostitute and don't even be near her, and whoever she would bring forth, would, it would be an unclean thing to having a revelation, this is of God. And she didn't care then what nobody thought. And Joseph, Brother Branham said, when he rose up from there, what a newborn faith he had. See, he never had need of any interpretation. The dream wasn't in symbols. It was right straight out. Don't fear to take Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. There was no prophet to give the interpretation. So it had to come directly. Right straight like that from God to Joseph. God, just bypass all the medium people tonight. It's from God to the bride. And there's going to be a bride on the earth that does exactly what Joseph did. When he heard the word, he got right up and married Mary. All the reproach was gone. He went from putting her away privately, and we don't want to embarrass her, to marrying her openly, saying, I'm proud to be the father of the Messiah. We're going to go into that just a little bit tonight. I think it'll mean something to you. So this word newborn, let's just look at it for a little bit. It means something fresh. So coming from a reproach, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes, a reproach, to a newborn faith means something fresh has happened in your experience. Something that a person already has, but it was like something was reborn or born again. It gives them a fresh start. It gave Joseph fire to move forward. It took all the question away about what God thinks about it. And tonight, maybe you've had a question. Maybe there's a question in your heart, can any good come out of Nazareth? Or how could God do this in a teenager? She's just a teenager in the message. We're going to go from little babies tonight to teenagers all the way up to men and women in their 80s, Simeon and Anna. So it doesn't matter your age. I said, it doesn't matter your age. When God comes on the scene and when the supernatural takes place, the bride responds to that. And so no matter what is negative or bad in your life that's taking place, no matter what scoffing and reproach or scorn that you're bearing for the cause of Christ tonight, God has given you strength by his word. You can bear that tonight. You can stand the reproach of the word. We're going to look into the scripture and look at some examples in the message of men and women and believers that stood the reproach of the word in their day. And it's so easy to look back and, my, that's wonderful, and thank God for that. It's so easy to look forward and say, that's going to be wonderful, and that's going to be good. It's so difficult to look right where we're at. But that's what we need to do tonight. It's not looking back. It's not just looking forward. It's saying, this Christmas, God give me a revelation. 
God give one another in our family a revelation. And I believe it would really lift our spirits and lift our hearts this Christmas. May this service be a gift for some of you to know that we all are bearing a reproach at some level. Being a Christian is to be part of the minority. We are a minority tonight. So rather than taking that in the bad part, it's good to look at the Christmas story and look at all of the ones that were faithful throughout that and say, you know what? They bore a reproach. We're in the minority. But rather than pulling the victim card, turn it around and let it be a newborn faith. Let something spring out of you like a freshness. Rather than looking at it, it's so bad, say, thank you, Jesus. You've chosen my womb. You've chosen my life. You're looking at my situation. I need a newborn faith. Joseph was a good person. Mary was a good young lady. But this fresh start or this fire to move forward came after the angel appeared to them. So when we speak about newborn tonight, it's not speaking about just a baby being born or something being born like that, like an infant. But it's something that happens inside of a person to give them strength, to give them vision. It's something that happens in your journey. You that have started out know what I'm talking about. It's a a newborn faith. It's a vision and strength to move above the reproach. Let's go back to Psalms 89 together. Thank you, Brother Tom, for having a Sunday night service. Uh, So many churches are canceling tonight. And it's so wonderful in the message that we have the family of God. And to know that we're not alone. Take strength from services like this. It means the ministry has not forgotten you. We have not forgotten you. We're here to stand with you. Some of you might not know, but when we travel as ministers, like we did last weekend, there's times during a service, during a meeting, we'll give your testimonies without giving your name. We'll we'll speak about a young lady or a young man or a family in our church or a brother. And 100% of the time, the people respond and are so happy. Praise the Lord and hallelujah and maybe even clap because they see that themselves, when they hear the word or they hear a message and then when they hear a testimony, it just triggers uh, something in their heart, in their testimony, that God's alive. And if he can do that for them, he can do that for us. And it's like a newborn uh, energy and faith comes through their lives. That's what we need this Christmas. In Psalms 89, verse 50 to 52, these few verses are, are verses that Brother Branham read in a Christmas message 56 years ago tonight. December the 23rd, 1962, Brother Branham preached the reproach for the cause of the word in Jeffersonville. And he talked about how it's a very strange Christmas text. But the Sunday before, he had preached on the world falling apart. And he says, I want to speak on the reproach for the cause of the word. And he read this scripture in Psalms 89 verse 50. He actually had him read it again and repeat it again. Remember, Lord, the reproach of thy servants, how I do bear in my bosom the reproach of all the mighty people. David is dealing with reproach. Or it could have been Ethan here in in this certain psalm here. The reproach. Verse 51, wherewith thine enemies have reproached, O Lord wherewith they have reproached the footsteps of thine anointed. Blessed be the Lord forevermore. Amen and amen. Amen. A Christmas message on December the 23rd, and Brother Branham speaks this as a Christmas message on the reproach. 
I have it here in front of me, the reproach for the cause of the word. I begin to look into that what a reproach means. A reproached or to be reproached is like a disapproval. To be disappointed, to be uh, the object of someone's disappointment, to say, I'm so disappointed in you. I, we had such high thoughts and, and for your life, and you are such a reproach to our family. You are such a disappointment to your mother and I. Or to have a, a, a friend or a brother and sister, a family member, give you what the world would call a look of reproach, means of disdain. You look down on them. It's like, I'm putting up with you. It's to be reproached, is the word in the scripture, is a thing that makes the failings of someone or something else more apparent. Or whenever you're around, they're so convicted. They're so condemned because whenever holiness is around, it brings unholiness in a person, another person, to the surface, and it makes it more apparent. And it's like, I just can't stand to be around you. That's what a reproach is. It could be in the family. It could be on the job or in the home. Some of you might experience it this week. It's a disdain. It's like... A reproach is showing open disapproval. It can be like um, a disgrace or a discredit, uh, a source of shame to us, or like a stain. You're like a blot on the family. Many believers have experienced that when they chose Christ. Did we not? Or embrace this message. We realize that there's others that just don't see it the same as us, and it causes a reproach. I want to say this tonight and make it very clear. To give your life to Christ is to accept a reproach. It's not an easy road. And some of the elders should have, could have been a little bit louder. Amen. We thought, we thought it was going to be so easy. I thought if you gave your life to the Lord and we're in the Lord's army, that it's just going to be a roar and a shout. No, many times you'll get more disapproval. There will be a discredit to you and a shame and a blot. Some of you have heard the phrase above reproach, such as someone living above reproach. That means there's no criticism that can be made of their lives. But as believers, we live in a land where we are reproached. We are scorned. We are criticized. Jesus standing be with Pilate and before those that were wanting to take his life uh, didn't call a lawyer and he didn't try to use his cell phone or ask his disciples to get a lawyer. He stood there like a lamb. He was bearing the reproach. They stripped off his clothes in shame. It, it's like to be rebuked or reprimanded, to be standing a reproach. You're familiar with Isaiah 53, where, where the Bible prophesied of Christ and how there would be no beauty that we should desire him. And the reason that I'm just speaking this for the next two or three minutes is to let you know that if that was the bridegroom part and we're the bride, we're going to bear it also. You can bear it. We're not avoiding it this Christmas. We're not pagans like the world, but we're not going to put off an opportunity to thank the Lord for coming. But when he came, there was no beauty that we would desire him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And if you join yourself with him, you're going to be despised. You're going to be smitten on. People's going to take you wrong. And we're going to get into that in a little bit about some results of a reproach or consequences that we all should count as familiar. But we're here on family night to let one another know that you've either gone through that, you're going through that, or you will experience it in the future. The more you give your life to Christ, it's not an easy road. There is a reproach. There is a cross. And I'm going to take it deep here and then take us from a reproach to newborn faith. There is a cross, but there is a crown. 
There is an earth, but there is a glory. There is a natural body, but there's a celestial body. So I'm taking you now into this maybe seemingly negative or bad side so that by the end of the service, we can go into a newborn faith and say, yes, I have that, but I have this. The Bible says about Jesus, he was despised and rejected and he bore our griefs, carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. This Christmas, receive the gift of healing. Just receive it. Open it up. Spread back the wrapping. Hallelujah. It might be unexpected. You're, you're being given a gift tonight. Just take it. There might be deliverance in that package. There might be joy in that package. There might be a gift of forgiveness in that package. You came to the service thinking you were going to be rejected, and God is giving you justification. That's a gift. Don't reject the gift. Because of how you see yourself and your attitude and what you've done when the word is saying, I forgive you. Amen. This Christmas, I'm justifying you. And if a person received that revelation, what a newborn faith. What a faith would come out of that. It's like a person laying dormant and all of a sudden being energized, quickened. They would come out of that. Jesus was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Wow, this is a wonderful Christmas message, isn't it? A reproach. I'm dipping down into the reproach a little bit. This was the little baby that came that grew up and was given his life. They want him in a, in a manger where they can hold him. And the bride is saying, but I want, him, I want to be married to him. What do I need to do to get all the way? Amen. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? He was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. And it goes on to speak about how it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, seen the travail of his soul. Talks about how he's bearing our iniquities. This is Isaiah 53. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death, he was numbered with the transgressors, and bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That was us. That was all of us. That was the reproach that came with bearing the name of Christ. Lord, this Christmas, don't let us ignore what you're doing. Here at Cloverdale Bible Way, it's just the same as any other day. People have looked back and they were looking back and looking at Isaiah and the priest was reading that in the temple and it was being read and then they missed him. Then people looking forward and what a day that's going to be and it's going to be wonderful when we get over yonder and then they ignore right in front of them the word that wants to be revealed. And I say, God, this Christmas... Don't let us be so busy and distracted and worldly and caught up in the lights and the tinsel that we miss you. Miss you in our own lives. Miss you in one another. Amen. Don't let us make it a tradition and fail to see what God is doing. Can I speak about reproach a little bit more? Reproach to, from a reproach to a newborn faith, but a reproach is to be criticized, to be reprimanded or blamed. You are the one. 
You always rain on our party. You never laugh at our jokes. You, you're all, you never fit in. And a real child of God, it really hurts them. But in their heart later, they realize, I don't fit in. But rather than bearing that as a, oh, man, I just don't fit in. What do I got to do to fit in? Take it as a newborn faith tonight and say, you know what? God's people have never fit in. That's why God says, I'm not going to leave you here. I'm going to take you away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you are reproached and accused, that means, or re- even uh, scolded, and rebuked, you you know, you're not even in the message, or you don't even believe the Bible, but in your heart, you do. Brother Bradham said a critical spirit will criticize. So Paul in 2 Timothy 3.12, I hope this is encouraging someone. He said, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's just a wonderful Christmas message. Well, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. They don't want you. They scoff at you. They spit at you. You're not part of the in crowd. And some of this persecution comes threefold. Number one, it comes from the outside. We're persecuted. Then there's a persecution from within. And we know that bride don't persecute bride, but there's still misunderstandings. Brother Branham preached on misunderstandings, and he talked about that in questions, even amongst us, and things that go on, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecutions. And lastly, third, because of decisions we make or choices that we make uh, that are not necessarily us operating in God's perfect will... It's called a personal persecution that we go through. And I want to stand here tonight and say this. As a believer, you can go through all three of them. When you receive persecution from without, you can stand that. When it happens from within and misunderstandings, you just make sure you're the one that is spiritual and has the spirit of Christ. And lastly, when there's decisions and choices that are made in your life or in your family or in your career or whatever in your experience, and it shows that you haven't walked in God's perfect will, and then there's persecution or there's a, maybe a comeback from that, you can stand that. You can go through that. None of these persecutions are excuses enough for a believer to throw in the towel. Hallelujah. In this season, in this hour, in this rapture change season that the bride is going through, a reproach for the word, I want to encourage you tonight, stand. Stand for the word. And when you've done all to stand, just keep standing. And when it seems like the storms, 2018 was a storm, maybe filled year for you. But you're still standing. You've bore it. Hallelujah. I'm speaking tonight on standing the reproach of the word, but that means bearing it. You can bear it in the university, in the college, in the school. You can bear the reproach. You can be the one believer that makes it in the rapture out of that hellhole. In your family, when there's others that are in denominations or other people that are just totally worldly. Or when there's people within that say they believe, but they act at certain times immaturely or inappropriately. That's no reason for you to fall apart. You just keep standing. You just keep being Christ. This is December 23rd, and a prophet preached the reproach for the cause of the word. I think that's an encouragement 56 years later that we can stand the reproach of the word and the cause of Christ. Are we together tonight? Let's go to Luke chapter 2 as we get into the story further.
It's good to look at believers in the scripture and see them in their real life struggles. This wasn't easy for Mary and Joseph. I mean, who in this building has ever brought forth a child without knowing a man? If you're a sister, I mean, if you're a brother that has a family, when was the last time you could say, we had a family and we, you know, there wasn't anything natural to it. It was just a supernatural thing. It's all supernatural, but I'm speaking about Isaiah, a virgin shall conceive. It had never happened. So we have someone in our youth group, a teenager, that comes up pregnant. Everybody's quiet. I'm talking about Mary. And she's as pure and as virgin and as holy, and no one believes her. In fact, when she's sharing this with Elizabeth, which was an elder sister, and remember Zechariah, this is all... This whole story, I don't want to say story that it's not true, fiction, but the whole thing surrounding Christmas ought to be edifying to the believer. These are believers. Mary, Joseph, Zechariah, Elizabeth, Simeon, and Anna. It's like Noah and those that made it in the ark. It's always very few. Each one of them had a reproach. Um, All of a sudden... An angel appears in Zechariah's about his ministry, and he doesn't believe it. How could it happen to my wife? We're, we're in our elder years, and, and God smote him dumb. Can you imagine a minister being dumb? <laughs> and I'm not talking mentally. I'm speaking, he cannot talk. He, he cannot talk. He, that's, that's his way of carrying out his duties, and from that time... He was dumb. He couldn't speak. He had to write on the tablet. He bore a reproach. It's like we saw on Thursday night. It's like, talk to me, talk to me. And he's just writing on a tablet. Come on, talk to me. It was like, it used to be able to do this, and now you can't do that. What a reproach. And they'd laugh at him. He was a believer. He was a believer. Elizabeth was a believer. But yet in her womb was a, something that hadn't moved for months. And she's talking to a teenager in the church, and, and the teenager says, this is what's happened. Oh, but you didn't invite me to the, to the wedding. Are you and Joseph are married? And no, no, we're not married. And how can these things be? And an angel appeared to me. And she's just given her testimony. And Elizabeth wants to believe it had never happened before, but... Here's now Mary talking to this elder in the church, Sister Elizabeth, and she wanted to believe, but as soon as she got to the name, his name shall be called Jesus, all of a sudden something moves inside of Elizabeth. Something that had been dead or or, or not moving. A newborn faith struck it. It was there, but it came alive. The promise was there. Remember the angel said, you're going to bring forth a son. His name's going to be John. But it had been laying there with no life, but at the sound of the name of Jesus. I wonder if we can say Jesus tonight. Jesus. Something moved from death to life. Wouldn't that be wonderful if that happened tonight? Say, oh, Brother John, you said, let's all say Jesus. No, at the name of Jesus. It is. But they all bore reproach. They all bore a scoffing. It's like, how can these things be? Now let's look here in in Luke chapter 2, verse 21. I think a week or two ago, two weeks ago, we read some of this. I'm going to go back in a few minutes to something Brother Michael Ray spoke on, and this is where this whole message stemmed from. Luke 2, 21. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so called of the angel, Luke 2, 21, before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification, which was eight days, if you look back to Leviticus 12, verse 8, 
The days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished. They brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Verse 24, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. And if you remember in Leviticus 12, you could bring a lamb, and if you were poor, like a peasant, you could bring turtle doves. Mary was poor. So here in this message, reproach for the cause of the word, Brother Branham said, what a reproach to Mary. What a reproach to Mary and Joseph for his word. He starts talking about how the scorn, how they lifted up their eyebrows when they seen little Mary go by, said to Joseph, you're marrying a prostitute. And remember, brother, adultery was death in them days. To get her from being killed, he's just talking about how Joseph was thinking to put her away privately. But remember, all the time, God was dealing with them. It was according to the word, and they didn't know it. A virgin shall conceive. And Joseph looked, and before the angel had visited him, he said, well, I love her, but I'm a righteous man, and I can't marry a woman like that. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream and said, don't fear to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Oh, what a comfort. Would you agree the word brings comfort? I want to say in 2018, Nigh unto Christmas, the bride needs comfort. The Lord Jesus is our comforter. The Holy Ghost is our comforter. And may you receive it tonight. Receive comfort tonight in this busy, stressed, caught up world. There's no one that brings the smile to his face like you as his wife, walking into the room saying, I love you, Jesus. And Mary on her road to the well, the little virgin, about 17, 18 years old. I'm quoting Brother Branham. 17, 18, married uh, to a man that had been married before and had four children as an old man. Talking about Joseph. He was a widower. He was older. And she loved him, and she didn't know why. And he loved her, and he didn't know why. They didn't know why, but tonight we know why. Because Joseph was of the house and lineage of David. Why was it Mary? Because she was a teenager that had kept herself pure. God could have trust in Mary that she wasn't going to give in to the reproach and the peer pressure. God said, I want a teenager that I can trust. That will take me at my word that in spite of family, friends... Whoever, she was going to stand on the word of God. She's standing in line with her little turtle doves and everybody has their lambs because they're more well off. And this is the Messiah. And the mother and father are so poor, they just have a turtle dove for an offering. I don't want to digress, but some of us would misapply and misunderstand Back then or even today, when the scripture says, if you can't provide for your family, you're worse than an infidel. Let me bring to your mind that when Jesus was born, God Almighty couldn't even provide a room for him. He was born in a stable. He couldn't provide a bed for him. He was born in a manger. He had no blue blanket or no nice garment. It was a teenager reaching up and grabbing swaddling cloth that was hanging over and that wrapped the lovely Lord Jesus. That's almighty God. I would say very well, he provided for his children. Do you agree tonight? I mean, is there anyone that's going to accuse God of not providing? He provided everything. Last Sunday night in Edmonton, there was a sister that sang a special, and I'm forgetting the words exactly, but I'm paraphrasing, I have no complaint to God. After all he's done, after all these years, I have no complaint. Can we say that tonight? 
After all he's done, after all he's been, and we've gone through, I have no complaint. About 50% of you, I got you. We have no complaint. Say, but what about this or what about that? You're describing the reproach. You're talking about the cross. You're talking about finances or, or your bad health or you're talking about somebody misunderstood. That's the reproach. But tonight we're speaking about from reproach to a newborn faith. We're talking about God doing something for you or for me in a moment of question, in a moment of, of misunderstanding, in a moment when we don't know what to do, God comes on the scene. Amen. Amen. She's bearing a reproach, standing in the, in the temple, a teenager, and no one was rallying for her. No one shook her hand as she went in and said, go for it, Mary. Well, I know you were a virgin. You can do this. He's the Messiah, not a person. She's standing, she's standing in the line because it's according to the word. And everybody's saying, don't even go near her. And, and, and the scoffers were there. And, and, and Brother Branham says, I wonder how little Mary felt. I, I know we like sermons way up in the clouds. Here's a prophet. I wonder how Mary felt. Probably about the way you have felt in your life. Probably there's times in your life since you've given your heart to the Lord, you felt like Mary did. Brother Branham said, did you ever think of that? I wonder if she felt scared, he said. And the scoffers were saying things and she came to the day of the dedication and all the women were keeping their distance. And here she came up with the baby, walking up with the baby. And all they had their little fine needle work to dedicate their babies and uh, nearly all of them pulling a lamb. And she had two little turtle doves cleansing for her own purification. The little baby wrapped in swaddling cloth made out of the yoke of a back of an ox's neck. That was this swaddling cloth in the manger. They had nothing for him. They was too poor. And here she stood. I'd like to just take a real knock at that devil tonight that says you have to be wealthy. And you have to have a lot of money. And you have to be at a certain status. I think we need to take a good whack at him sometimes and say, I have Jesus. That's sufficient. But you don't have a nice blanket, Mary. I have Jesus. You're a prostitute. I know you were playing around. You thought you were all goody two shoes and religious, and you're nothing but somebody that you're living a lie. And Brother Branham said she was poor, but she just stood. I want to encourage you tonight stand on the Word of God. No doubt, he said, all the women kept their distance from the little virgin. See, she's got an illegitimate child. Brother Branham said, see how God makes things so radical looking? He pulls the wool over Satan's eyes. They were saying filthy, dirty, adultery. She's an adulteress. Listen here. That didn't stop that beat in little Mary's heart. I pray the Lord Jesus will turn up the volume of revelation tonight. No matter what they're saying, no matter what you're hearing, condemnation, you're bad, you're a bad mother, you're a bad daddy, you're a bad provider. Just heaping on you the scorn and the mockery. Oh, if we should have only done that, and oh, if you would have only that, but it didn't stop that beat in Mary's heart. I'm here for my purification. They kept their distance. They're calling her holy roller fanatic. But Mary knew whose baby that was. Hallelujah. And the bride knows what we're carrying. That it wasn't us that did this. It wasn't us. It was the angel that said to us, you're the bride of Christ. I just believe the angel say, what are you doing standing there tonight? What are you doing? I'm standing because of the voice of an angel. 
And from that time, there's been a newborn faith. There's been a freshness. There's been an energy. There's been a fire. And this is what I pray this Christmas. Take it from being a sermon now, right down to family time. This is what I pray would happen to every single person. And we desire for our children and for our spouses and one another and visitors. And just at that time when everything is just silent and the scorn is just heavy on her, all of a sudden comes, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah. What is that noise? It's Simeon come bursting into their mockery party. Oh, they're scoffing and mockery. Here comes Simeon, an 80-year-old brother that had a revelation. That's the Messiah. I tell you, something must have happened inside of Mary. Some newborn faith must have said, wow, look at that, brother. Look at that. I knew something was in my heart, but look at that vindication. I tell you, one can send a thousand, now two thousand, now Simeon's exploding. Let me touch that child. Let me bear that child. Hallelujah. All the scoffers and mockers, I'm sure they're just standing there, their mouths wide open. Simeon didn't care. He had a revelation. Mary didn't care. She had a revelation. Joseph didn't care. He had a revelation. The bride doesn't care. We've got a revelation. Oh, but your family. Oh, but your boss. Oh, but the finances. Oh, but the economy. God, give us a revelation. Give us a newborn faith this Christmas. Here comes Simeon, had the word of the Lord, saying, I see the Spirit of God descend upon me. I stood and looked at him, and he told me, Simeon, you've been a righteous man, and you're not going to die till you see the Messiah. I'll make you have a testimony. What are you going to do that for, Lord? That's my business. My opinion is that he can sure pour the coal to them on that day. You had a witness. Why didn't you listen to it? He's talking about the mockers and scoffers. Friends, make sure you're on the right side. Oh, my, my, my. Then God about had enough of just, oh, we need one. Oh, just Simeon. No, here comes Anna. Here comes a, another Charity Wong. Come busting into the room. She couldn't even see. But she was being led by the Holy Ghost. Who was there on Thursday night? Charity is like so expression filled. Like, where, where did she get that? Anna was about 84 years old in the temple praying. All of a sudden, the Lord revealed to her and said, Simeon is right. Yes. See how we can encourage one another? On December 23rd, family night, right before Christmas, you say, I was planning to spend it alone. Or I thought I was all alone. And God's coming tonight saying, no, there's other men and women just like you. Amen. Lift up your armor. Amen. Lift up the shield. Amen. Let this be a Christmas that you can bear that reproach Amen. with a newborn faith. Amen. Rip open the package and say, Jesus, I want what's inside of there. Anna, she couldn't see daylight from dark, he said. But she could see farther than many people today that's got good eyes. Woo! She didn't know whether it was daylight or darkness. She couldn't see with her eyes. But she could see a lot further than a lot of people that had good eyes. What's he talking about? She had revelation. I pray God... They can take whatever from me, but let me have a revelation. My eyesight, my ears, my, my legs, my feet, whatever, but give me Jesus. Yeah. Brother Ernie's down in Oregon this weekend visiting in the prisons, and today was with another minister, used to come to this church, and was with him today. Jesus said, when did you visit me? When? When you were in prison. I didn't know that you were in prison. No, in so much you've done to the least of these. Sister Helen Billisberger in the hospital tonight, still needing our prayers. But the Lord has kept her and her family's gathered around her. But it comes a time 
when your feet or your legs just don't want to get up and move. And you have pains or something strikes you. That's when we want to know that we're in touch with Jesus. And take my health, take my money, take my degree. But I want a revelation, brother. Dig down deeper and say, God, give us a revelation this Christmas. What is it all about? I say, give me the eyes that Anna had. She saw in the spirit, the coming Messiah was at hand and the spirit moving in her heart. I say, God, move in our hearts, move in our families, move in our church. We're about ready to have a watch night service and thank God for what he's done. It's good to thank God for what he's doing. Look forward and say, God, whatever you have in 2019, let there be a revival in my life, in my family. Let my son get baptized. Let let my daughter give her heart to the Lord. Let them have a newborn experience. And you say, but they're a good person and they're, they're not bad. Joseph was a good person. But he had a question. Mary was a good person. But she was, there was something moved when Simeon came in and Anna starts coming in and Brother Branham said, what a little bitty church there was. Zachariah, Elizabeth, Mary... Joseph, Anna, and Simeon, six out of millions. But I'm all alone, or there's only two of us, or there's only five. As it was in the days of Noah, God dealt with them. They were in harmony. They got together. And when Simeon came in there where the little baby was, I'm still quoting, he'd never heard nothing about it. But here was the baby and Simeon sitting in the room and the spirit fell on him. Hallelujah. He didn't say he saw the star. He didn't give gold. He didn't have it to give. But he had a revelation. He didn't know nothing about those things. But the spirit of God fell on him and said, move out, Simeon. And here he went walking, not knowing where he was going. Like Abraham, he was seeking something. He didn't know where it was at, but he just kept moving. Maybe some of us are just kind of walking, not knowing which way to go. I don't know if it's this way. I don't know if it's that way, but I want to be moved by the Spirit. Lead me, Lord, and I'll follow. Lead me out there. And he said the Spirit of God fell on him, and all at once he stopped. And the Holy Spirit must have said, there he is. (laughs) There he is. He reached over into Mary's arms, took up the baby in his arms and looked up and said, Lord, let thy servant now depart from this life in peace. My eyes is looking at your salvation. Hallelujah. He was looking with different eyes. Everybody else is scoffing, mocking, don't want to be around. Simeon walks right up there. Where's this baby? If I could just touch this child, you're all calling it. You don't want to touch it. You don't want to even look at Mary. Simeon walks right into the scoffers and the mockers. It's the same today. They don't want your Jesus. They want your innocence. They want your purity. They want your sound mind. And we'll give them as much as we can making it through this life. But our heart is the Lord's. The very thing everyone was making fun of and the women were shunning, Simeon said, it's your salvation. And about that time, here comes the old blind woman winding her way through, staggering through the crowd. She comes up, prophesies. Oh, my. You'd say, give us a positive testimony, Anna. Say something good. Do you all know what she said? A sword shall pierce your heart. But it'll reveal, I'm, I'm, I'm reading Brother Branham's words here, quoting Luke 2.35. A sword shall pierce your heart, but it'll reveal the thoughts of many hearts. Oh, you say, Mary had to look through the reproach. 
on the sharpness of the word and the sword and say, wow. If that's going to reveal the hearts of many, and this is your salvation. Brother Branham said, what was it? I guess some of those women said, now look at see what kind of class it is. That old woman cracked in the head. There he is over there standing before that prostitute girl trying to say a thing like that. That uh, illegitimate child. Old Anna sits there half starving herself to death. Fasting? And they were saying, starving herself to death, going on like that. She, she don't have any fun like we do. Look at Mary. She don't have no fun like all of us do. Look at Anna. No. She was about her father's business. She was a bearing a big reproach. Some of you are beautiful tonight. You bear a reproach. You bear the scorn. You bear the cross. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 1. Let's turn back to Matthew. Our family evening's almost done. It's almost finished. But look in Matthew 1.18 again, the, the few verses after Matthew 1.18. How many paradoxes are in these few verses? Speaking about from a reproach to a newborn faith. Just from Matthew 1.18, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother, Mary, was espoused or engaged to Joseph before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Ghost. That was a miracle. Then Joseph, her husband, you say, I thought they were just espoused. I, I thought they were just engaged. This is how serious engagement is. Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately or privately. He's not going to make it a big thing in the church. He's embarrassed. It's like, how could my lovely engaged, how could she do that? And I'll just put her away privately. It's not going to be a big thing. But while he thought on these things, while you're thinking on these things, while you've been praying about God's will for your life and what you should do, in Joseph's case, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Saint Joseph. So it's not vague and it's not about someone else and this person. It's... You, I'm speaking to you, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. She's your wife. For that which is conceived in her is, I tell you, what a revelation. If God would give that to a young man tonight and say, that is your wife, don't forget, an angel can talk to her too. So if it's God on one side, it'll be God on the other. Th these things are like paradoxes. Verse 23, we see a virgin shall be with child. You say, it's impossible. You say, it can't happen. But it fulfills scripture. A virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted as God with us. Now verse 24. When Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him. Would you agree he got the revelation and took unto him his wife and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. Our time is almost finished tonight, but this is really the heart of the message. A few weeks ago, Brother Michael Ray spoke on the token and spoke about Rahab, the harlot, and how she bore the reproach. And how long it was from the time of the scarlet cord being in the window until her and her family was actually brought out. It wasn't the next day. It wasn't three days. If you look from Joshua 2 all the way to Joshua 6, 
It talks about the days and the weeks and the Passover. Then they crossed over Gilgal. They had Passover. They ate of the old corn of the land. The manna stopped. They had seven days of circling around Jericho up to April 23rd. It's right there in the Bible until Jericho was destroyed. And then Rahab and her family and, and Joshua 6, to 25, and all that she had was saved. It was at least 15 days. Over two weeks that Rahab allowed that token scarlet cord to be in the window. She was scoffed. She was mocked. It was a test, but she stood the reproach. Everybody said, <laughs> look at that scarlet cord. Look at that token. Look at that. But down in her heart, that was her safety. I wonder if you would have the same revelation. It's not just the next day or well, a week later. No, she kept it there. Sure. And when everything else is being destroyed, Rahab's house was standing. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You say, oh, that's good for Rahab. No, it was good for the spies. Because God was confirming that it's not just Moses. It's not just Joshua. I'm going to use the words of two brothers in the church. And whatever they say is as good as my word. And when everything else failed, there's her house standing. Joshua never said that. It was two spies. Two brothers that believed the message. Hallelujah. Two men that caught a revelation that whatever I say, God will back it up. You'll lay your hands on the sick, they shall recover. Not just Brother Branham, not just the pastor, but now men and women operating. How many, you, you remember this morning, Rahab walked out of there as a prostitute, but she married Salmon and brought forth a son that was right in the lineage of Jesus Christ. All the scorn, all the reproach, all the mockery of years and years and years. God was stamping the whole thing. The spies, Rahab and her family by saying, I'm going to bring my son, my life right through that lineage. Do you all know where he was born? In Bethlehem. It's incredible. This, the cold Christmas story comes back to the token, comes back to reproaches comes back to men and women in Bethlehem is the house of God's bread. It's the staff of life. It was the water capital where fresh water comes. It was the well of Bethlehem that, that David, when he, when, you remember when the Philistines were garrisoned about that he said, I wanted some of that water. And men jeopardized their lives. Where are those men today that'll bear the reproach, bear the scorn? And say, I'll fight my way through to bring you a fresh drink. And he poured it out on the ground. Well, the carnal mind would say, what a waste. And what are you doing pouring that out on the ground? It's all speaking of Christ. It's all men and women that when you look at it all, just like us. Can I just take it a little further? Results of reproach many times leads to crying. Your heart's broken. Hurt feelings. Things that are against, and there's a struggle, and you're given one side, and there's someone else on another side, and there's a struggle, and you're left with a reproach, like a burden. It's like, really? Many times it's opposite. Differences of opinion and thoughts and mind, the clash, and you're laughed at. You're scorned. You're looked on as being the one that's wrong and in error. So they alienate you. They separate from you. We've mentioned scoffers, that Peter's talked about scoffers and mockers, but you're given a bad name. From that time on, when you make that... Stan, you're given a bad name. You're reproached and you're made fun of. <laughs> or something bad happens to you and they used to be your friend or your brother or sister and now they're like, ah, it's because of that. Aha, aha, the Bible says. Friends and family may leave. You're called oddballs. But I want to encourage you tonight. 
It's not all about the reproach. It's about a newborn faith where God will come back around to you and give you a freshness. I just read some scripture. I wish I had more time, but it was when Joseph realized that he's going to put away this beautiful lady that he was engaged to. And Brother Branham said, no doubt, but she rehearsed all of this to Joseph. And Joseph was wondering and said, this damsel that I'm engaged to, if it is the way it is and she's been with someone else, she should have been ravished. She should have been stoned, according to Deuteronomy 22. Brother Branham's saying the penalty of that. But now she's to be mother, not married. And Joseph, it seemed like that Mary was trying to get him to be her shield from the scoffers and scorners. Joseph was to be her shield and to go ahead and marry her and be her shield. He was to be a shield. He wanted to believe her. I really believe that, he said. He wanted to believe her, but her story was so unusual. It was hard for that believer to believe. And he said, so it is today. The power of the Holy Ghost upon the earth today in the church is so unusual. But it's the truth. Amen. And the Bible said while he was thinking on these things, he was a good man and he didn't want his own name marred. And yet he knowed if that woman was that way, he couldn't marry her. She was to be a mother by another man. That innocent little woman, her life has been so pure as a lily and I want to believe her and I don't know what to do while he thought on these things. Here, I want to bring it down to this tonight. While he thought on these things and was minded to put her away privately, he said, I don't want to cause any great disturbance about it. Remember, he had never taken the oath yet, but yet he was espoused. He was going to put her away privately while he was thinking on these things. To the best of his knowledge, he said he was a just man, a good man. He said, brother, sister, let me say this. If you are just, if you are honest in your heart, God is obligated to reveal the thing to you. I'm glad we came to church Sunday night. Just be honest in your heart. And God will reveal it to you. And Joseph, being a just man, pondering these things. How can these things be? No doubt he sat and prayed. He studied it in the scriptures. How could this be? And the angel of the Lord appeared to him. He goes on to talk about some of his thoughts and how he's just praying, Lord, I come through the lineage of David, Jehovah God. I'm a righteous man. I'm trusting in you, my beloved little sweetheart. I'm a spouse to her. I'll put her away. I'm, I'm, if I take her, then I'm guilty. She's to be mother, and I don't know what is these things, Lord. She didn't know if, the, if she had told the truth. It was all an unusual story, an unusual happening. And then the voice came, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. Remember already his wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. God sent his angel and revealed it. His revelation came to Joseph, and there was no mystery in it. He said, Joseph, there isn't no riddle. I'm going to make it real to you because there's nobody can make it real. Don't fear to take Mary thy wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And when Joseph rose from his sleep, oh, how his heart must have been full of newborn faith. That mystery that had bothered him, something that he wanted to believe, something that he dared to believe was so unusual, yet it was made known to him by a dream. New faith sprung up into his life. He said, oh my, he had faith in God. He had faith in his wife. Maybe you need faith for your husband, faith for your wife, faith for, to know what job to take or what direction to go. Trust God. You might be thinking one way, but God can speak to you and it'd be totally opposite. He's wanting to put her away privately and God says, no, you take her. 
said, I'm going to make it real to you. And new faith sprung up into his life. He had faith in God. He had faith in his wife then. Both faith in God and love for his wife and love to the one that he loved. There's no more question. No more question about it. He knew that was the angel of the Lord. He knew that God had revealed. Does somebody need a revelation tonight? Let the angel of the Lord just come by your way. and Wouldn't that be wonderful? There's a sister that gave a testimony. I heard it the other day. She had cysts in her body. And she didn't want to make a big thing about it. Didn't put in a prayer request. Didn't tell people. She just had cysts in certain parts of her body. She went up for prayer. Someone prayed. It was a minister. A visiting minister. She went back home. And the next morning, she realized the cysts are gone. There's no more cysts. She's given testimony to God. That's our kind of a God. Tumors just fall off right there in your seat there. Your back just straight right out. You say, what struck me? The angel of the Lord came by. If you talk about him, he'll come around. Tomorrow and Tuesday, just speak about Jesus. Welcome him in. How many would love for the question just to leave? All the turmoil, and you're going into this, and all of us, it's just gone. It's just like peace. Just, And the Bible says, I can imagine, sorry, Brother Branham said, I can imagine how Joseph felt when that taken place. The mystery was all over, and when this was done, he was found rejoicing. Hallelujah. He was happy. Till then, you're, you're kind of clouded over. You're bearing a reproach. You're saying, why me? Why us? I thought we had the revelation and something bad happened. But after God speaks and after God confirms it, then you can rejoice. Then he said he was happy and we find out right away he married her. No more question. He took him, Mary the wife, and knew her not as a wife until the child. He said happy about it. He was glad to be Mary's shield. He was glad to bear her reproach. Now, I'm not talking about just you, but when you get a real revelation, you're able to bear others' reproaches, people around you and what they're going through. I pray that we wouldn't become just an old, starchy church as we get older. You say, I've been there. I've done that. But there's others that are going through things. They need us to bear with them and... They're going through times of reproaches when they feel like running too and they feel like going too, just like you did. That's the time we need to bear one another's reproach. After this revelation, Joseph could stand and say, I'll be her shield. You don't have to stand all alone, Mary. I'll be there with you. Anybody have anything to say? Talk to me. Okay, I'll talk to you. Look at this woman. No, an angel appeared to us. He said, when a man can have it revealed that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, no matter how many creeds turn against it, you're you're glad to be a shield. You're happy to be a shield. Let them say whatever. This week, let them say whatever. But you got a big shield there to knock the fiery darts off. You're happy to be a shield. You're a doormat. This is a wonderful way to close a Christmas message. He said, you're a doormat. Whatever it wants to be, it doesn't matter. It's been revealed to you by the Lord. The Lord has showed it to you by his word. It's the truth and confirmed it to you and made it live again. You say, there it is. You know what? That's when we say, there it is. Let's stand tonight. What a super sign. What a super message. There's room in the inn, Lord. Come by this inn. Give us gifts this Christmas of forgiveness. Gifts of healing. Gifts of deliverance. I pray for your homes there would be gifts of joy. And if there's no joy there, you be the joy. You say, there's no peace in the situation. You bring the peace. Brother Jerry, I wrote it right down here. A peaceful atmosphere. Bring a gift this year. I wish I could give you 
$1,000, but my presence is my present. <laughs> and everybody goes, oh, man, no. Bring peace. Bring joy. Bring a smile on your face. Hallelujah. We could all use that sometimes. And isn't it amazing that even Balaam, a prophet that went out of the way, could prophesy of Christ? In Numbers 24, 17, he said, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. He prophesied of Christ when they wanted him to see the hinder parts of the church and the hinder parts of the message. He could only prophesy of Christ. I, I have nothing good to, but good to say. I think that's good. It's coming from a, a time of reproach into a newborn faith. As we bow our heads tonight, I wonder tonight if the Holy Spirit could put his arms around individuals. You can play something, Brother Ryan. I wonder if the Holy Spirit is here as we come together in the congregation. As we've seen over the years, not everyone can bear this reproach. Not everyone can stand the reproach of the word. They cave in. They give in to the pressure. They back up. They stop fighting. The reproach is too much. The laughing. What they said about you on the internet, what they're emailing, the pictures you see, and it brings a reproach. And you feel laughed at. And you're hurt. Say, how can this be? Then the Holy Spirit comes by and starts to minister to your heart. Then the angel of the Lord comes by your way. You're my daughter. You're my son. Maybe the service tonight wasn't for everyone. Maybe there's some tonight, tomorrow, Tuesday, you have a lot of family. You have a lot of, maybe even believers. Maybe there's moms and dads and brothers and sisters, cousins and aunts and uncles and grandpas and grandmas. But maybe there's a few in our family that really needed the service tonight. To let them know that it's not all about the reproach. But this Christmas, he wants to give you a new born faith. To bring back the new again. Bring back the freshness. To where you're not just talking about it and hearing sermons and going through the motions. But an angel of the Lord can come by your way. And by the time he's done, the questions are done. The mystery about it all. You rise up like Joseph. And you're willing to go out there and do the exact opposite. What you felt in your, in your own heart was the right thing to do. But the Lord Jesus, when he comes, he inspires you to do something so sacred, so divine. They laughed at the wise men. They scoffed at him for coming these whole years, months away from your business, away from your family, your wife, your children, your church. Two years. Where are you going? They passed through Jerusalem and all the preachers and all the charts and all the people that should have known better. They were lied to by Herod. Brother Benham talks about how the people in the streets laughed at them. Where is he that is born King of the Jews? Where is he that is born King of the Jews? Brother Benham said they laughed at them. But when they stepped out of that spirit, the, the star appeared again and led them all the way to the little house. The little child that had grown up now from a baby, now a little child. The same Jesus 
the same Lord. And they gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Again, reproached, scoffed at, lied to. But they gave and they worshiped. I wonder who would want to worship this Christmas with your gift. With your gift. Here I am, Lord Jesus. Like the shepherds, I'm coming to this place because an angel of the Lord, the seventh angel has appeared in our generation. Heavenly Father, let us respond 100%. Let us bear the reproach. And if there's some in our church and our spiritual family that need a newborn faith, may tonight be the start. Bring it all back new again. Appear to them, Lord Jesus. Cause the message to come alive. Cause the scriptures to become a new book. I pray for them, Jesus. We pray for one another. We give of our time. We give of our energy. We give of our money. We give for one another. Can we give our faith to one another and say, we are going to bind together in this great time of reproach. Heavenly Father, many raise their hands throughout the service and at the end now, some have lifted up their hands. You know every heart, you know every life, you know every situation. Wise men and wise women are still seeking for the Messiah. Whether it's a baby in a manger, whether it's a little child, whether it's a, a teenager, whether it's a man on the Jordan River, whether it's a man hanging on the cross saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Or whether it's 2018, the same message reproached, scoffed and mocked, looked down on, but May that newborn faith rise out of our assembly, out of our families, out of the individuals that are fellowshipping God. And may the Holy Ghost fall on them as you did Simeon. Move like you did through Joseph, Mary, from teenagers all the way up to Anna, the elder ones. Let them be encouraged this Christmas that you have not forgotten them. They are not alone. We pray that you would send that angel by their address, by their need, if it's physical, if it's in the spirit realm, if a devil has haunted their soul, I pray this year, this season, this time, even tonight, there would be a light as you ministered even recently here, uh, uh, an arrow of your presence comes shooting down into that blood cell. And loose them, Jesus, that they could see even their frankincense or even their myrrh shows what they feel of Christ. We accept that. Doesn't always have to be gold. Doesn't always have to be frankincense. Another person may give another gift and have another expression. Lord Jesus, we want to see more of you among us. We want to see more of these gifts manifested. God's gifts always find their places. Would you encourage our people? Would you strengthen us now as we're going out into this season? And it'll be a few days till we're back together like this next Sunday, if you would tarry. Lord, we want to be gathered around the marriage supper of the Lamb. We have holidays, maybe, and time off of school and work. Don't let us go through this season and neglect you and forget about you. Come into our gatherings. Come into our homes. Come into our private lives. Even some that aren't here tonight, they're with loved ones or traveling already. Would you be with them, Jesus? May the Holy Spirit minister to them. Give them something special cap off our lives with this kind of faith in Jesus name we thank you Lord mm, lead me
one safe, many traveling in different situations, keep them from sickness. May the star shine brightly. It's like it's returning back what your prophet said, speaking of brotherly kindness that we don't even hardly want to say goodbye. It ought to come to that more where it just seems like our hands and our hearts are knitted together. Don't let us where we always want to get away really quick and where we lose familiarity with one another. There's always food to make. There's always things to schedule. There's always appointments. Let us hold sacred, Lord, these moments. Even for one another, Lord, not knowing there might be a, a brother or a sister. As our sister Anno's grandpa just suddenly on Friday slipped away and passed away. Lord, we don't know, Father, what moment or what season from Sunday to the next. But when the roll is called up yonder, we want to be standing. Let us stand the reproach. Let us bear these burdens. Thank you, Jesus, for this season. And thank you for the newborn faith. Go with us now. And when more of you is opened in our lives to one another, let it be more of Jesus more of your nature, more of your presence. Let it be a sacred time, a consecrated hour for us, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We want to give more of you. If you would give us another year, we want to be more sensitive, serve you greater, and lay down more of our lives, Lord Jesus. Take us tonight. Angel of the Lord, visit our homes and our loved ones. And even those that are among us that feel discouraged and despondent or maybe shut in, would you go and visit them, Jesus? We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for one another. Take us this week. Even tomorrow, Lord, is the anniversary of you taking your prophet off the scene December the 24th. How that shook the ranks of the message. How that caused many to wonder, where do we go from here? What happens now? And we realize now there had to be more. There were others you wanted to use in the body. Use us, Lord Jesus. Be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name, we thank you. God bless you tonight. Again, shake hands with somebody near you. You're dismissed. Shake hands with that gift. Say, God bless you, brother, sister. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. No service Wednesday night. Freedom.